then uh, we come to our uh, next speaker. Uh, one of the uh, one of the three speakers we have today is Professor uh, Listiani from uh, Satya Wachana Christian University from Salatiga. Uh, Professor uh, Lis, are you already in the room? Yes, uh, I'm here already. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we are also grateful to have you here. Thank uh, you. Before giving you the time for your presentations, I would like to uh, read some of your uh, short bio, if you allow me, uh, for our readers, uh, for our audiences. Um, Doc professor Dr. Liz Tiani is a professor in English uh, language education program of Satya Wachana Christian University in Salatiga. Uh, she received her professorship in the, uh, early this year in February, which is quite recent, so we congratulate you for that achievement. Um, but um, Professor Ristian has been teaching uh, in uh, Ukaiswe, uh, Satya Wachana University since 1999 because uh, she was also uh, an alumni from the English department of the university. But then she uh, went for her master's degree in English language um, uh, from Sanata Dharma University in Yogyakarta and for to pursue her doctorate degree from State University of Samarang. Uh, so she did all her studies um, in country, but her uh, academic performance and achievements have been great that she has been uh, granted her professorship this year. Uh, her um, skills and expertise are in academic writing, uh, language acquisition, teaching and learning, also, of course, uh, English writing, um, and also teaching English as a foreign language. Her uh, uh, piece of works have been published uh, quite many. I have made, uh, listed down uh, at least uh, 12 that I can mention, um, but most of them, uh, if you can correct me later, but most of them are linked to writings. Oh. There, are, there are few that um, talks about speaking, so, um, but uh, generally uh, uh, Professor Listiani focuses on, on writings. Okay, without further ado, the uh, Professor Liz, I uh, give the time to you for your presentations. This will be as well as to Dr. Lon, 40 minutes uh, presentation and follow with a uh, question and answer for 10 minutes. Please, uh, Professor. Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. Thank you to the organizing committee and uh, thank you for all those uh, who have uh, participated here, audience. Yeah, I believe uh, most of you are teachers, or you are going to be teachers. Yeah, uh, just a little uh, correction. Uh, I got my professorship from uh, the government, from the Indonesian government, uh, actually uh, November last year. But uh, the announcement uh, was uh, uh, January, yeah, mid of January this year. Thank you. Okay. Um, when we talk about uh, teaching writing, everybody, uh, it's never enough. Yeah, like uh, what um, Dr. Lowen mentioned before, uh, there are so many things. Yeah, that we can um, we can dig and dig uh, from our uh, writing classes, from our writing experiences. Either we are teachers or we are students. Now, I want to share uh, something which is uh, actually something simple, but. Um, Many, uh, many of us, yeah, both uh, teachers or students, uh, may um, overlook uh, this uh, this thing. Okay, uh, let me uh, ask permission to share my screen. Oh, okay. Wait. Um, okay. Um, is it, uh, I think you are allowed to uh, do share screen. Otherwise, uh, I'll ask the colleague to check. Ah, uh, yeah. Wait. Uh, wait. This. Uh, I'm trying to find. Ah, uh, here it is. Okay. Can you see that? Uh, not on my oh, screen yet. yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait. Wait. Okay, uh, share screen and then ah, here it is. Now, can you uh, see that? Yes, it's okay. already on screen. Yeah, okay. 
So uh, my topic today is about teaching uh, writing from the heart. Okay, so um, here I want to um, share, uh, especially from my experiences, uh, as mentioned uh, before, uh, most of the time I uh, teach a writing courses, okay, and my uh, pieces of research concentrate on writing yeah, since uh, I became a lecturer in 1999 uh, at UKSW, my, what is that, my focus yeah, has been uh, writing and reading uh, in the past, but now uh, it has uh, shifted and I concentrate more on uh, writing. Okay, uh, before we, oops. Before we continue, uh, I'd like uh, to I'd like to ask all of you to see uh, the condition yeah, of uh, the world today. Nowadays, uh, it is very familiar for us to have world Englishes. Not like in the past when I was a student a long time ago. Yeah, we were asked to to decide okay which English <laughs> uh, we wanted to choose: American English, AE, or British English, okay, BE. So we have to choose. We had to choose in the past, but now not anymore. Yeah, it is the era of world Englishes. Okay, so whether uh, we have uh, um, what is that? Singlish, Singaporean English, or whether we have uh, Indo English, yeah, Indonesian English, or even um, with uh, with in the area where I live uh, in Central Java, whether we have Japanese English, yeah, that's fine. Yeah? Japanese English. Yeah, so this called the era of world Englishes. It is the good news, but there is something uh, sad about this. There is EFL, English as a foreign language is not the same as English as a mother tongue, okay, or ESL. Why? Because many challenges are faced by EFL learners, yeah, including uh, me, yeah, including us. Yeah. We all struggle yeah, to uh, learn the language. And then this uh, will bring us to the concept of inner circle, okay, outer circle and expanding circle. I believe uh, most of you are familiar with this, okay. So inner circle are uh, countries where English is used as the mother tongue, yeah, like UK, USA, yeah, Australia, New Zealand, okay. And according to uh, the data, there are 380 million speakers of English as a mother tongue. And then uh, outer circle refers to the countries where English is spoken as a second language, okay? Countries like um, Malaysia, Singapore, and then India, the Philippines, yeah. um, And according to data, there are about 150 to 300 million speakers. And the last one, expanding circle, it is where we are uh, living. Um, the countries in which English is a second, sorry, English is a foreign language, yeah? like uh, our country, yeah, and there are up to 1 billion speakers. Okay, so uh, this, uh, these circles yeah, show us that um, we are, uh, we all must struggle, yeah, we are struggling to learn uh, English as a foreign language. And then uh, we have uh, so many challenges, yeah? Uh, being in the, what is that? Being in the expanding circle, yeah? We have so many challenges uh, like exposure of the language and then motivation and then self-confidence, self-image. Uh, actually, there are so many yeah, of self-concept, including self-esteem, uh, yeah, but I uh, just mentioned two. And then also lack of grammar knowledge, lack of adequate vocabulary, okay? And we can mention other problems yeah, related to uh, our struggle to learn this language. Okay, now let's see exposure and Indonesian's uh, general proficiency in English. In Indonesia, oh, sorry. Um, how can I go back? <laughs> uh, sorry, I need to go back to Ops. Okay, I will just. Uh, sorry, I cannot go back to the previous uh, slide. Yeah, 
I will read this. Uh, in Indonesia, there are um, more than 700 languages spoken. Yeah, so more than 700 languages spoken, local languages. Yeah, and Indonesia is included in the group of countries with low English mastery. And then out of 80 international countries, Indonesia is in the 51st rank. Okay, and out of 21 Indonesian, uh, sorry, Asian countries, Indonesia is in the 13th. Our rank. So once again, uh, out of 80 international countries, Indonesia is in the 51st rank. And among 21 Asian countries, Indonesia is in the 13th uh, rank. Okay, uh, according to Kumparan, Indonesia falls in the category of 50 countries with the lowest abilities in English language mastery. In 2016, Indonesia was the was the 32nd among other 72 countries. In 2019, Indonesia was the 61st rank out of 133 countries. And compared to Asian countries, in 2020, Indonesia was the 13th rank out of 25 Asian countries. The, the rank was still far below the average abilities of Vietnamese or Japanese. <laughs> who were far behind our neighboring countries, like Malaysia and uh, Singapore. Yeah. So uh, the description, uh, everybody, I want to uh, share that this is the condition of our country. Yeah. So uh, we are still far below other Asian countries, yeah, Southeast Asian countries. So this is the condition. And as teachers or teachers-to-be, we all need to understand that it is not easy yeah, for our students, for Indonesian students to uh, be, what is that, proficient in writing. Okay, from the data presented, we know that many Indonesians are still struggling, yeah, mastering English language skills, yeah, including us, yeah, including me. Though we are living in a global world with intense uh, bombardment yeah, of exposure of mass media in English, but still it is not our mother tongue, nor is it uh, our uh, second language. Yeah? So the status in Indonesia is English as a, what is that, um, foreign language, yeah, EFL. Now I want to see, uh, I want uh, all of us to see uh, things about motivation, yeah? because this are uh, really uh plays an important uh role in uh students or learners uh, proficiency in writing so actually what is motivation Lex lexically speaking it means stimulus motivating force or drive to do something okay according to uh, call it in indonesian context motivating students still becomes a challenge which is not easy there are many policies on English language at schools. Though there have been many efforts to respond to the existing weaknesses, these efforts cannot be realized as programs which motivate students. Uh, once I uh, conducted a research in a, in a village area uh, in Central Java, and then um, I interviewed some of the students, yeah, and many of the students said that uh, they were not interested in English. And then when I asked them why, they said that because it is difficult, yeah? or I'm not interested, or I cannot, I cannot uh, learn the language, I cannot speak in English, etc. So it means that uh, actually uh, students or learners uh, need motivation to learn. So the ones that I told you about uh, were high school students, yeah? uh, junior high school students, uh, time when uh, actually they should have yeah, high motivation to learn English as a foreign language, but they were so uh, demotivated and they always thought that English was difficult. And qualified English teachers still cannot be snared, meaning uh, it is difficult yeah, to get uh, English teachers with uh, who are qualified or have good uh, quality. And many English teachers cannot think of activities which arise students' motivation in learning the international language. Like me, for example, when I was, but it was long time ago, yeah, when I was in uh, primary school, 
uh, I had a very strict <laughs> teacher yeah, who was angry all the time and the students were noisy and the students were naughty, naughty and uh, and the teacher was angry all the time and he, uh, she, sorry, and she, uh, what is that, hit uh, her long wooden ruler yeah, on the desk every time she was angry. So uh, in my mind at that time, uh, English was something uh, like a nightmare, yeah, like a ghost, <laughs> which was so uh, frightening for me. Okay, now uh, let's see uh, research of, uh, a piece of research which I uh, conducted in 2017. Uh, I was working with a co-researcher, yeah, um, Ms. Tananu Raksakul yeah, from, uh, from Thailand also. Uh, we did collaborative uh, research and the respondents were 20 Indonesian students of academic writing and 20 Thai students also from academic writing class. They were asked about motivations in learning English. And then data were, were derived from open-ended uh, questionnaires. Okay, and then um, from 20 Indonesian students in the academic writing class, uh, sorry, should be capitalized here, 12 students claim or 60% claim that they had high motivation, five students had very uh, high motivation, and three students mentioned they had average motivation. This is the good news that nobody was low motivated. The reasons uh, for their motivation uh, varied from self-drive to learn English, which is intrinsic motivation, to parents and relatives, which became the source of motivation. So in Indonesia, I think it is still similar to uh, Thailand in which uh, parental factors yeah, uh, still are still, parental factors are still very important in deciding uh, the students uh, study program to enter. Okay, so here are the uh, table. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the table uh, which showed uh, uh, my students' motivation. Yeah, so if you see from uh, student one until student 20, uh, most of them uh, had uh, motivation because of other factors, not because of uh, their love of English. Yeah, for example, uh, student one mentioned that he wanted to be a good teacher, English teacher. So it is a, we can say it is intrinsic motivation, and then um, uh, or in instrumental. Yeah, sorry, instrumental motivation. And then um, if we see uh, parents, yeah, um, parents became uh, still became the what is that uh, the uh, factor which uh, decided or determined their motivation to study at the English department or uh, English language education program. And then um, most uh, mentioned parents, yeah, only several yeah, mentioned about dreams because uh, they want to work abroad or they want to uh, find, uh, what is that? Uh, an, an American or Australian uh, spouse, yeah. So uh, my impression is that uh, in Indonesia, in Indonesian context, uh, parents yeah, or parental factors still play a big role. Uh, now, uh, here is still uh, about the research. Highly motivated students are aware of the status of English as a bargaining vehicle to fulfill uh, the dreams or goals uh, from a Thai student's uh, motivation. Uh, these students possess integrative and instrumental uh, motivation. Three students wanted to socialize with foreigners. Two students wanted to see the world. Okay, uh, two students wanted to be fluent in English and one person wanted to speak like a movie star. <laughs> Instrumentally, eight people wanted to have better opportunity in employment or a job that they loved. And three students, oh, sorry, student three uh, specifically wanted to be a flight attendant. Now here is the uh, percentage of the Thai students' motivation. Yeah? 
very high, uh, 19.04%, uh, high 57.14, average 40, uh, sorry, 19.14, and low motivated students uh, were 4.76, similar to uh, Indonesian context. Uh, only uh, 4.76 students were low motivated. From the research, it can be seen that in parental, that in, sorry, in, in both countries, yeah, parental factor or parental role is still very important and can be considered as a major determinant of learners' motivation. Okay, now let's see a uh, lack of self-confidence. Uh, this is also a determining factor in uh, student success in writing. A lexical meaning of self-confidence is confidence in one's powers and abilities. Uh, what, I, uh, what I often find from uh, my students in the classes uh, are students with um, low self-confidence. They often feel that uh, their friend's writing is uh, much better than uh, theirs. And so they have low self-image and low self-confidence. Yeah. Self-image is similar to self-confidence. Self-image is talking about one's concept yeah, of oneself. So the uh, image in Indonesian, we say, uh, uh, what is that? Gambar uh, diri. Yeah. And then uh, the next one is uh, lack of grammar knowledge. Yeah. Research strongly suggests that most beneficial way of helping students improve their grammar is to use students' writing as the basis of discussing grammatical concepts. Researchers agree that it is more effective to teach punctuation and sentence variety and the usage in the context of writing than to approach the topic by teaching isolated skills. It means that the best way to teach grammar in writing is by integrating. Yeah? integrating the concepts of grammar in the writing. This is what uh, we are doing in uh, at the English uh, department or English language education program in UKSW in which uh, there are uh, basic grammar classes for students, for first year students, but uh, higher than that, uh, students are taught, sorry, grammar. Grammar is taught in uh, integration with writing. Okay, according to uh, Chin, writing is a complex and challenging activity for many students. Teachers should focus on grammatical concepts that are essential for the clear communication of meaning. Research conducted since, nine, since the early 1960s shows that grammar instruction that is separate from writing instruction does not improve students' writing competence. In other words, uh, grammar should be taught in collaboration or integratively with uh, writing. Okay, uh, still about uh, grammar. Uh, research also shows that transfer of former grammar instruction to writing is not applicable to larger elements of composition. Okay, once again, transfer of formal grammar instruction to writing is not applicable to larger elements of composition. It means that um, elements of uh, writing, yeah. Uh, when students get higher in the uh, level of writing, like when they are going to proposal writing or um, what is that report research report writing, yeah, uh, they should have known, yeah, all the grammatical or grammar concepts. And then uh, through detailed studies of students' writing, uh, Slav, uh, so so see, nineteen seventy seven uh, in Chin two thousand. 2020 concludes that grammar instruction is uh, is that which gives the greatest return for the least investment of time meaning that grammar instruction is actually very important in teaching writing uh, related to uh, grammar is vocabulary yeah vocabulary knowledge of foreign language is necessary it provides learners a broader ability to produce well-structured written text and contributes to the comprehension of utterances. Uh, this semester, I'm teaching um, 
procedural writing class and um, proposal writing. Yeah. Uh, procedural writing class is offered to the second semester students, so they are new students, 2020 students, and and uh, up to uh, the third essay writing. Yeah. Uh, three uh, pieces of essays are written collaboratively and they are now going to the fourth uh, essay, which is individual. Up to the third uh, essay writing, uh, it is very funny that they still like to use the adjective simple, <laughs> simple and simple. And I said, okay, you check uh, from your um, thesaurus dictionary or any online dictionary you have and check for other words, yeah, other synonyms and don't just use don't use the words which are very common and very general, which are too broad, like good, simple, because many students like to use simple, yeah, like, um, what is that? Um, passing uh, from or getting an A for grammar class is simple, for example, yeah. So most of the time they use the word simple, the same vocabulary. And I said, okay, you have to, what is that? You have to expand in your vocabulary, not only using the same word over and over again. Now, I tried to relate uh, the case of uh, writing success with uh, SLA theories, second language acquisition theories. There are so many things which are, uh, what is that, which are um, interrelated yeah, in uh, second language acquisition and learner success in English language skills, uh, like personalities, uh, extroverted, introverted, yeah, ex extroverted learners are said to be more successful than introverted learners. And then uh, environment also plays an important role, okay? Like um, uh, how is the learning atmosphere in the classroom? And then the group dynamics, and yeah, how, uh, how is the development or the growth of the, uh, learning situation, it can enhance learners' success, but it can also depress learners. And then attitude to the teacher, is it positive or negative? Okay, and then uh, the same, yeah? Attitude to the materials, whether it is positive or negative. And then uh, learner strategies. These are also important in uh, teaching, uh, what is that? In one's success yeah? in writing. And then uh, I add one more there, uh, temptation to plagiarize, yeah, which is an academic violation. Now let's uh, have a look at the student strategies in writing uh, at a glance, yeah, just uh, quickly. Uh, memory strategies yeah, refer to uh, attention, uh, focus, elaborating, or elaboration, rehearsing, and visualizing concepts. And then cognitive strategy yeah, related to problem solving and reasoning. Compensation strategy yeah, is related to communication strategy, guessing meaning from context and gestures. Metacognitive strategy, cognition about cognition, knowing about knowing, yeah, become, becoming aware of one's awareness. Yeah. This is related to higher order thinking skills. And then social uh, strategy, asking, cooperating, practicing, empathizing. Uh, Dr. Lone has uh, talked a lot about uh, cooperative uh, learning, yeah, about uh, group work yeah, in writing. And uh, I, I agree with her that um, in uh, collaboration with others, weaker students can be helped yeah, by, what is that, by working together with uh, good students. And effective strategy, uh, talking about um, anxiety, how students can lower their own anxiety, how can they encourage themselves and how can they motivate themselves. Yeah? Now we come to the, uh, what is that, the core yeah, of the uh, topic of my presentation. Yeah? How can EFL teachers help? Okay, this is the key. Teach from your heart and not just from your knowledge and skills. Why do I say that? Because uh, there, are, uh, there are many cases yeah, in which we just um, teach and teach. Yeah? Teachers just uh, give the knowledge and the skills, but not other things. Yeah? 
uh, unseen things or abstract things like motivation, self-confidence, self-image uh, should be, what is that? Should be enhanced, should be built. Uh, and one of the uh, people who can help these students to have a good self-confidence, high motivation, and good self-image is teachers. Yeah. Okay, what should be included in uh, teaching writing? Yeah, teaching the knowledge and skills, of course. Yeah, as uh, language teachers or writing teachers, we have to teach other skills like summarizing, paraphrasing, okay, quoting, etc. Uh, but then uh, unseen things, as I mentioned before, things like motivation, self confidence, self image, and self esteem. Also, uh, this must be uh, what is that? must be given emphasis also. So teachers should, uh, writing teachers not only uh, should teach, but also teach and motivate. Yeah? Why? Because the background uh, that I uh, told earlier, yeah, because in Indonesia, once again, English is a foreign language. So many students still find it difficult. And they even, uh, they are even demotivated yeah, because of this condition. Yeah? They feel it hard or difficult to learn the language. And then, um, what is that? Self-confidence, self-esteem, understanding, yeah? teaching and understanding. Understanding the student's condition, understanding their weaknesses, okay? Understanding the student's inability yeah? to write sentences or to express their ideas. And then uh, this also has been discussed a lot by uh, Dr. Lone, yeah? teaching and giving constructive feedback. Yeah. Um, and there are so many kinds of feedback, yeah, just like uh, what Dr. Lone has uh, explained before, yeah, uh, direct feedback, constructive feedback, etc. Okay, and then also teachers uh, of writing should also teach honesty and dignity. This is related to uh, plagiarism, actually. Okay, so if we see students, um, what is that? Uh, either um incidentally yeah, or on purpose yeah. uh, they just copy and paste from a source then this is the teacher's um role the teacher's task to give them advice yeah, about honesty about academic honesty yeah okay uh just to highlight yeah what has been um presented yeah by dr lone about uh feedback Lexically speaking, it means the return of a part of the output of a machine or system or process. Yeah, jadi ada, um, so there is, uh, what is that? Input, and ada uh, return, yeah, return of a part of the out output. Also, uh, lexically speaking, it means the transmission of evaluative or corrective information about an action, event, or process to the original or controlling a source. Okay, now let's see uh, uh, the, uh, what is that? The operational uh, definition, yeah? uh, just to highlight yeah, what Dr. Loan has uh, shared before. Ellie stated that supportive feedback affirms that a learner's response to activity is correct. Corrective feedback is actually a kind of unsupportive feedback. And this is still uh, debatable yeah, among researchers and teachers. Sorry, yeah, researchers and teachers. Supportive feedback should be motivating. And many second language learners give massive significance. Yeah. So often my students, my writing students, yeah, ask for uh, feedback. Yeah. <laughs> so it means, it seems that uh, feedback is something that, I, uh, that they uh, like very much. On the other hand, it is argued that unsupportive feedback can be disheartening. And this can affect learners' attitudes towards feedback. They may act adversely. So what is that? Uh, giving uh, too much, yeah, too much feedback yeah, can be disheartening. Yeah. Next, according to Zaman and Asad, uh, too many and too frequent corrections or unsupportive feedback uh, can have demotivating effect on the learners. Yeah. Lee claimed that second language students in general put a high priority on the accuracy of their writing. Uh, also mentioned by uh, Dr. Lone before, yeah, both 
uh, accuracy of grammar and content yeah, should be prioritized. Yeah, but many students are too focused on writing, uh, on uh, grammar. They, they forget uh, the quality of the content of their writing. That's why learners are eager to have errors indicated or corrected by the teachers. Yeah. Okay, uh, next from uh, my study in uh, which is just published in 2020 uh, on 76 students. Uh, from all the participants in my study, it was found that there were 49 student participants who had um, good or positive perceptions to a teacher feedback yeah, in their uh, writing. Uh, 10 students or 13.16 displayed unfavorable attitudes yeah, toward uh, teacher feedback and the remaining 17 uh, students, 22.37, had mixed perceptions towards teacher feedback. Yeah. Okay, um, now let's see uh, together uh, this one. Students' responses to a teacher feedback uh, varied. Yeah, a good type of feedback that students are waiting for would be the one that is contextualized. What is contextualized? It means uh, the feedback is adjusted with the students' conditions as well as needs. Yeah, to bridge the gap between uh, writing lecturers and students' expectations, yeah? writing lecturers should consider the three uh, parameters. Yeah, like clarity of the language and then the tone of the feedback yeah. and how to deal with the word choice and style in uh, giving feedback and it is uh, interesting because um, feedback uh, with uh, even though we don't mean it yeah even though teachers don't mean it but uh, feedback with uh, what is that which is which sounds very uh, harsh and <laughs> very uh, strict yeah, may dishearten uh, the students. Okay, uh, now about honesty and dignity. Yeah, I believe uh, many of us are familiar with this or, or all of us yeah, should be familiar with this. It is about, um, what is that? Um, plagiarism, yeah? academic uh, violation. Um, many students are not uh, aware of the uh, of what is that of this uh, academic violation so uh, they think that it is okay yeah, to copy and paste but they don't realize that okay so here we have to uh, warn them about um, that about what they should do yeah even though maybe uh, it is not academic writing uh, but we have to teach about how to um, cite from a source yeah how to uh, paraphrase yeah so before it is uh, too late, yeah, even though it is not academic writing yet, perhaps, yeah, but we have to teach the, uh, what is it, basic skills yeah, of uh, paraphrasing and quoting yeah, simply to the students. Also from uh, Nixon, 2018. Yeah. Uh, there are many uh, steps, yeah, like uh, the first one, yeah, start early, okay. Um, Meaning, uh, we have to help learners yeah, to avoid uh, plagiarism, uh, and we can ask them to provide enough time for themselves to write uh, a paper. Yeah, so don't uh, ever write a paper in a rush. Yeah? That's what we have to uh, advise the students. And then uh, the next one is about uh, citing from a source. Yeah, uh, for my proced procedural writing class, for example. They are second year, uh, sorry, a second semester, yeah, first year students. Uh, they don't know how to uh, cite yet. And then one day they use a statement from a source and I ask them, okay, uh, whose uh, who statement are you using in this uh, paragraph? And they mention uh, the source and I said, okay, um, just simply write down um, the name of the person you cite from and the year, okay, of publication. So I don't teach the what is that, the detail of the citation, in-text citation yet, but I just asked them to um, write the name and the year. And then uh, we can also ask uh, learners or students uh, about proofreading. Yeah? Proofreading, uh, 
it will not uh, take uh, much time yeah if possible uh, proofread uh, the content and the language also yeah it is about uh, quoting okay and then um, about the next one is about um, paraphrasing yeah paraphrasing uh, meaning um, what is that uh, just simply tell the students about uh, Restate, yeah, restating the same idea but with their own uh, words. Okay, and then um, they may also uh, give uh, add values, yeah, add their own values, yeah. Uh, not only depending on the uh, researchers' uh, opinions, but they also uh, can uh, add values. They can add their own opinions. Okay, and then uh, plagiarism checkers, yeah. Uh, for uh, thesis students before they go to the examiners yeah, they have to get their uh, thesis finished thesis uh, checked in terms of plagiarism in the library so they send uh, by email to the library and the next day they will get the plagiarism uh, check result yeah. okay uh, this is the same yeah, about um, avoiding plagiarism Okay, and then uh, maybe we can also ask them to spend time with the teacher yeah, to make sure that they know the guidelines for the paper that they are working on. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, we also need to advise them that uh, just because uh, they found something on the internet yeah, or somebody's blog, yeah, it doesn't mean they can use the information freely yeah, without citation. So we have to tell them that it is about uh, what is that? Appreciating, yeah? appreciating someone's work yeah? or acknowledging someone's work. Okay, so that's why we have to uh, write uh, their name or family name or uh, full name is okay yeah? for um, uh, what is that? For beginning uh, writers, yeah, for me, uh, they are okay. Yeah? They don't have to write with a strict uh, APA 6 edition or 7 edition uh, yet, but just writing the writer's name and year of publication will be okay yeah, for beginning uh, writers. Okay, uh, I think uh, that is all that I can share. Uh, actually, there are so many ideas, yeah, but I'm afraid of the, uh, I'm afraid of the, what is that, time, yeah, which is um, uh, running. Uh, these are my uh, list of uh, references. Uh, later, I will uh, give the, what is that? The PDF, uh, PDF um, version to the committee and yeah, to be shared to the audience. Okay, uh, audience, thank you. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. I return uh, the time to uh, to the um, committee. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Professor Listiani, for your presentation. It is really uh, good to get the ideas on how we stand as in the nations, how we stand in terms of writing skills. But it's really challenging. And uh, yet, uh, it's, it's, it's no, no knowing that we are still behind of the, even Asian countries, mm -hmm. unless it uh, becomes our motivation to progress further. Um, talks about Talking about motivations, in one of your presentation, you talk about uh, motivation is as, as uh, one of the key aspect of, of the writing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our, our participants asked the, the questions uh, about how to, to do uh, uh, research in terms of exploring motivations. Uh, what instruments uh, or main media that would be mm -hmm. suitable for, for doing research on motivation and uh, in in that uh, research, uh, how how do we state the scope of the the research? If you can okay. get the point. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Miss Linda, shall I uh, answer it now? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, first, about uh, the instrument, uh, we used uh, open-ended questionnaires only. Yeah. Uh, I welcome anyone who wants to collaborate with me yeah, to conduct research. So this will be great for me. Yeah. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, I, I admit that uh, it was uh, not enough actually. Yeah? So 
uh, those who want to conduct research on motivation uh, also need to interview uh, the respondents or the uh, participants yeah, to dig uh, deeper information about uh, their motivation. It is very interesting. Um, the one that I conducted uh, by myself uh, to some uh, junior high school in Central Java, yeah, um, it was a direct interview. So I came to the school and I interviewed the students during the break. Yeah, I had a talk uh, informally, uh, a mix in Indonesian and Japanese. Yeah, so uh, are you interested in English? Do you like English, etc. So. They're very, they were very, what is that, open. Yeah? They said their um, opinions, um, honestly, yeah, frankly. <laughs> so things like, I don't like the class. I don't like the teacher, for example. I don't like the materials. It's difficult. Yeah? So I asked them uh, further, why? I don't get it. I don't understand any, anything, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. So a uh, direct interview will be, uh, will be the best, I guess. Yeah? Yeah, at that time, uh, it was very limited. Yeah, so uh, we just used uh, open-ended uh, questionnaires. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, uh, Professor. Um, so uh, it is a good invitation for uh, everyone in this webinar <laughs> that Professor Christian is willing to share. Uh, to co work on on uh, research uh, on motivation. So, if in case you're interested, then please um, seriously uh, dig on this opportunity. Thank you, Professor. Let's move on to the next questions. Uh, many uh, of our participants asking question about uh, or in relation to plagiarism. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question uh, from uh, Ms. Sandri, now, how to effectively convince students uh, that plagiarism is a serious academic crime? So uh, in order to pre uh, prevent them doing so in writing. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question in relation to uh, plagiarism is that, um, how do we build up a good paraphrasing without uh, getting trapped into doing plagiarism and, and, the, and the best way of quoting in, in that sense will, will help in, in your opinion and your strategy and, and tips that will be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's very uh, interesting. Yeah, every time we talk about <laughs> plagiarism, uh, believe it or not, everybody, uh, when I was uh, first, uh, sorry, second year, second semester, sorry, second semester student, uh, writing paragraph, paragraph writing. I think uh, second or third semester, yeah, when I was still a student, <laughs> I failed. I failed my uh, writing course yeah, because of this one. <laughs> Perhaps uh, it became a kind of, what is that? Inner motivation yeah, for me to, to be better and better in my writing. So now my expertise is even in, <laughs> in um, academic writing. Yeah. So at that time, I remember I was assigned by, we were assigned, um, my classmates and I were assigned by our lecturer to uh, find an article yeah, and write it uh, you know, as our uh, paragraph. But as far as I remember, we were not taught how to, yeah, how to paraphrase, how to cite uh, properly, etc. So I just, what I did, I was just copied and pasted uh, the, no, 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 no computer yet at that time. <laughs> so I just uh, copied that uh, by handwriting to my uh, paragraph because I thought, wow, this was a wonderful uh, paragraph. And then uh, I was called by the lecturer and I was uh, given minus 50% <laughs> because of the academic, uh, what is that, violation. Yeah. And I protested. You never taught us about, uh, about this before. And uh, the lecturer mentioned, well, you and in my, my Rishki, stand by Rishki. You never taught us. Okay. And then uh, uh, the first question is very interesting. How do we, uh, how do we tell our students? How do we, what is that? Make our students understand that it is a violation. Uh, perhaps uh, what I, uh, Perhaps I can share what I do to my uh, students. I, I said to them that stealing someone's idea 
is a crime. <laughs> That's what I, what is that? Give as an illustration. So I said, uh, imagine if you have something and then somebody else uh, take yours, okay? Take your thing. So how will you feel? Uh, I, I give a kind of, what is that? Analogy, yeah? So of course you will be angry. Of course you will be sad. Of course you will be disappointed, okay? The same thing, if someone has ideas and you just use their theirs, we you don't need to come to them, uh, send email or send a WhatsApp a message now, but you just write down their uh, family name and their uh, year of publication. And then in the uh, list of references or end of text references, end of text citation, then uh, you have to write, uh, uh, what is that? The full uh, information like uh, family name and then initial and then year and then uh, where you get the information from. Okay, if it is a book, then you have to write the, what is that, the city where it is published, etc. Yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> that's what I do to my students, yeah, giving them uh, illustrations. Yeah, so, oh, okay, this is, uh, considered as quote unquote yeah as theft or stealing and the second one how do we paraphrase this different but uh practice always makes perfect yeah so that's what i uh, learned so don't worry everybody uh we have we all have yeah to uh, practice paraphrasing day by day and it cannot be what is that sorry it cannot be done instantly okay so the more we practice the better and yeah? just like when we are practicing how to uh, ride a bicycle how to swim yeah we need practice and the more we practice uh, the better yeah <laughs> thank you miss linda uh, thank you <laughs> thank you very much uh, yes uh, it's not easy for uh, us uh, not having English as our second mm -hmm. uh, language to, to right. start writing. But yes, yeah, it, it is a challenge that we should deal with. So, uh, however, uh, back to the first um, presentations that you did earlier mm -hmm. um, about having English as a first language. Uh, has been, there been any uh, decision or pursue uh, efforts to the government to change uh, that English is no longer as foreign language, but as a, as a word English? Has there been any any uh, advocacy towards the government to, to, to make such changes in, in your uh, knowledge? Um, I think um, among uh, linguists, yeah, among linguists in Indonesia, I think um, there has been, uh, what is that? <laughs> Um, kind of quote unquote uh, agreement or um, uh, what is that consensus? Yeah, that uh, English with any uh, dialect, especially Indonesia, uh, we have uh, more than seven hundred local languages. Yeah. Any dialect will be okay. Yeah, will be accepted. Uh, I remember uh, attending a conference long time ago. Yeah, when I was uh, still a new lecturer in around two thousand. Yeah, at that time, uh, I went to a conference at Sanata Dharma University, and uh, one of the speakers said that uh, there's no longer no longer uh, choices. You have to speak American English or British English. Yeah, but um, even uh, Madok English. Yeah, Madok is the <laughs> what is that? <laughs> the way Japanese people uh, speak. Yeah, even Madok English is okay. Yeah, it's, it is accepted. Yeah, so. I remember uh, the linguist mentioned that, okay, shall we decide whether it is called Jeffling, yeah, Japanese English uh, or Indoglish, yeah, Indonesian English. Yeah, so yeah, uh, I think it is, uh, what is that? Acceptable yeah, nowadays, yeah. No more, uh, what is that? No more borders, yeah, no more borders like, uh, oh, you have to speak in American English or you have to speak British English, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, it seems that we, we are still have to do a lot of things uh, to, to have English as right. uh, our, our uh, usual way of communication, even in writing.
I think. Um, last, last question, if you if you allow, in terms yeah, of sure. teachers, I mean, um, when we talk about teaching writing at university level, it, it should it, it might be driven with uh, teaching students at a lower educational level. Do you have any any um, concept or any strategy for teachers? Because uh, among other uh, participants here are teachers from high school or even uh, uh, senior high school and uh, lower uh, uh, education level. So that would be very helpful. Uh, thank you, Miss Linda. Um, I will reflect uh, this thing yeah to my to myself yeah everybody. So as I mentioned before, uh, when I was in primary school yeah in my fifth and sixth grade, I got a very strict English teacher yeah, and uh, she, she was always angry <laughs> because most of my classmates uh, were perhaps mischievous or naughty yeah and. This always made many teachers angry, yeah, including the English teachers. And uh, she was mm, she was always angry and uh, shouting all the time and hitting the uh, what is that long wooden uh, ruler on the on the desk. And I was kind of thinking that, wow, is this English? Okay, is this uh, is this called English class? So at that time, I didn't like English at all. Okay. And then uh, when I was when I went to junior high school, uh, this is the turning point, yeah, for my for my what is that for my love to English. That is the first time I fell in love with English. I had a very what is that uh, understanding teacher, uh, a mother, <laughs> a very what is that very motherly and a very um, understanding. So if we made something wrong, she would correct us. Um, and uh, she wouldn't, what is that? She would never be angry or uh, scold us or uh, shout or <laughs> hit the uh, long wooden ruler. And at that time, I, oh, uh, I fell in love with English at that time. Yeah. Oh, this is English. This is, I, I love this class. Okay. And I was so motivated. So if somebody or many people ask me, uh, how did your motivation, uh, how did you get your motivation? I would say, I got my, my motivation from my English teacher in uh, junior high school. Yeah? She changed my perception, my understanding about English. And then um, in senior high school, yeah, I had a very uh, grammar-centered teacher. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, she focused most of the time uh, on grammar. But at that time, uh, English had been my favorite subject, so I didn't have any, what is that, any... A problem with English. So my suggestion for uh, any teachers yeah, at any level is uh, still the same. Yeah. Uh, besides teaching the knowledge and the skills, we have to teach uh, what is that? Teach quote unquote yeah, the uh, unseen things like um, motivation, yeah, enhancing students' motivation, and then giving them self confidence that they can do that. Yeah. And also uh, making them. Uh, love English, that will be a great, um, what is that, thing that a teacher can do, yeah? an English teacher can do to the students. Yeah, I think um, uh, that is uh, the important uh, thing, yeah, be besides teaching the knowledge and uh, the skills, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, bro. Ms. Linda. Thank you, Prof. Uh, Listiani. So uh, your explanations are uh, the last... Uh, Part really highlight the the, the meaning of your you know, the title of your uh, your presentation this afternoon. Thank you very much. So